Big news for those of you who are using the Unreal Engine for filmmaking. Tim Sweeney has announced that there will be costs associated now with using the Unreal Engine for other applications aside from game making. And uh, yeah, this doesn't affect game developers, but one of the things we're going to change next year is for industries other than game development, um, you know, such as the automotive industry and so on, um, we're going to move to a seat-based uh, enterprise software licensing model for Unreal Engine. Um, the traditional cost for Unreal has been a royalty-based one, where if your application, your interactive application, makes over a certain threshold, you would pay Epic and Unreal, an extension, a 5% royalty fee. This cost was not associated with using the engine for other applications aside from games. So film, you could technically use the Unreal Engine for free. And a lot of people have and do use the Unreal Engine as their main render workhorse. It's not going to be unusually expensive uh, or unusually inexpensive, but if you're going to be building a, game, a product outside the game industry and not um, paying a royalty on it, then yeah, it will be a licensable piece of software like soft, you know, like Maya or Photoshop or whatever. Um, and that looks to be a change. From these comments, we can infer that the new Unreal pricing will most likely be a subscription-based fee. Now, Unreal already has a per seat license already available. As you can see here with the Enterprise program, it costs $1,500 per seat, and it is for non-game professionals seeking premium support, private training, and or custom licensing terms. Now, some people are assuming that this announcement is essentially because the Enterprise program is making very little, and they're going to essentially push a large population of their user base into this new licensing bracket. And they will remove the support from that enterprise program license. Now, while that may well be true, and there is reason to believe that is the case, another option is, of course, that they create a fourth option, which does away with the support and costs substantially less than the current enterprise program. Personally, $1,500 would be quite the bitter pill to take if you're a hobbyist and not a professional. For a professional, this is actually pretty standard pricing. You look at Cinema 4D, Maya, Houdini, it sits around that benchmark. I think the difficulty for Unreal is going to be that a lot of the users that are using the Unreal Engine for film and animation are hobbyists. Yes, it is used extensively in the professional workplace. Star Wars used it. Finding Dory used it. A lot of professional workplaces are using it. But on the flip side, we have a large population of hobbyists and enthusiasts using it to create fan animations and really high quality animations in a fast turnaround time. I can see this new price going from anywhere from 350 US to 1,500 US. If it is the higher amount, I do see a lot of people migrating away. But personally, I think that it's been a long time coming companies are allowed to charge for value and I think it's going to be up to everyone as individuals to work out whether or not that this price which has yet to be announced will be something that they are willing to or able to afford going forward with the Unreal Engine. Attractors of the Unreal Engine is the amount of topology that you're able to have in a scene and still run very very quickly and the visual fidelity of the Lumen rendering system. That said, there are alternatives out there, and if you want me to do a video on them, I'd be happy to. Just let me know by liking the video. The better this does, it lets me know that you are interested in this topic. Also, if you are interested in creating films, animations, games, and just telling stories with these sorts of technologies, head over to polyfable.com. It's a website that I created 
that has courses, levels, and just general information that will help you, even if you have no knowledge whatsoever in this technical sphere, to help you bring your stories to life. That's polyfable.com. So I hope that I've been able to shed some light on the situation here. Personally, I'm not too worried either way. I think they have every right to charge for it. It's a fantastic piece of software. I do worry a little bit that it will be the $1,500 option. I hope it isn't. I'm fairly certain they won't do that, but I could be wrong. My guess is it's going to cost somewhere between $350 and $1,500. If it's the $350, good. If it's the $1,500, I'd understand why you'd give it a miss. And as always, thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Fousen from polyfable.com, signing off. It uh, tries to bring our engine uh, revenue uh, back and associated with the teams that are doing work in the industries. Uh, a funny thing about uh, being funded uh, so heavily by Fortnite over the past six years is we've kind of let different parts of our business get disconnected from their revenue streams. Yeah, we have big teams serving different industry verticals, building this and that set of features. Uh, for custom clients um, without revenue to support it. Um, and that's been fine because we've seen adoption uh, grow massively. But one of, the, one of the rigors that we need to do as we become a lower margin company and kind of have to cope with this is reassociating revenue streams with the things we're doing. And uh, you know, this will absolutely not affect game developers. I think um, free and uh, pay upon success is the best deal uh, we can offer. And if you don't like it, then you know, call up the Salesforce and negotiate uh, a zero LP deal in case you're up front, and that works too. Um, we're also dedicated to continuing all of these other uh, services that we provide. You know, we have the Epic Game Store. Uh, we think the Epic Game Store is the cure to the disease that's impacting a lot of the industry right now, where the mobile platforms have become overlords and are you know, extracting vastly higher payment processing fees than any same payment processor on Earth. And, you know, we're fighting that. And we see one day uh, over the coming years, uh, perhaps at different times in different territories, we will be able to open up uh, these platforms and bring the Epic Games Store to iOS and to Android and to continue offering uh, you know, a 12% uh, fee store. Um, and serving customers at a much, much larger scale than we served before. And at the combined online services, it's just have uh, online services we built for Fortnite, um, and uh, now have opened up to all developers. If you want to escape from you know, Steam, or escape from the various uh, single platform ecosystems and connect all of your players together as we did, it's a great solution for that, and we'll continue, and we'll continue these investments. Um, and so, yeah, this is really an ethics process of reconciling our business model with uh, real the reality that eventually comes to exist for all companies. Uh, we escaped it for a while with Fortnite. And, uh, and now we're getting back to uh, having reached the scale of uh, uh, now a 4,000 some person company um, through a really painful downsizing. And uh, we're, we're desperately uh, now going to be operating in a different way to make sure that we don't get back into that kind of condition. Um, and through our designs, good and bad, uh, we'll support you and we'll continue everything we're doing. We're grateful for your business. And, uh, but anyway, Unreal Fest isn't about um, you know, this, it's about celebrating the accomplishments of everybody who's building amazing stuff with Unreal Engine. So let's get on with the show. Thank you very much for coming.